So hello everyone. Welcome you all to the post contest discussion of code courses if to contest. So let's start with the discussion. So this was the first question max plus size. So you are given an array a1 to a n of positive integers. You can color some elements of the array red, but there cannot be two adjacent red elements. That is for i to less than equals to one, uh, i greater than equals to one, less than equals to n minus one, at least one of a i and a i plus one must not be red. That is, you can't color adjacent elements red. Now, what is your score? Your score is the maximum value of the red element plus the number of red elements. The question is that what is the maximum score that you can obtain? So n is uh, of the order of 100 and ai is of the order of 1000. So let's understand the question with the help of, let's suppose this is a test case that, just a minute. Yeah. So let's suppose you have an array and array is 2, 3, 5, 1, 2, 4. This is the array, okay. Array is containing six elements and this is your array. Now, what is the score? If let's suppose I decided to color some elements red, let's suppose I decided that I am going to color this element red. Okay. If I am coloring this element red, then I can't color the adjacent element red. Okay. So I can't color this element three as red. Now at five, I have an option that either I color it or I don't color. Let's suppose I, I decide that, I, okay, I will not color this element five as red. Then again, at one, I have an option. And let's suppose at one, I decided that, okay, I'm going to color this element as red. Now at two, I don't have any option because I can't color two as red. Similarly, at four, I have an option that I can color it or I may skip it as well. Let's suppose I decided that, okay, I'm going to color this element four as red. So I simply colored it. Now at the end, my score is maximum of all the elements that are colored red. So elements colored red are two, one, and four. The maximum of two, one, and four is four, plus the number of elements that are colored red. So there are three elements that are colored red, so plus three, so score becomes seven. So the question is that what is the maximum score, maximum score that you can obtain? Is the problem statement clear? Anyone having doubt in the problem statement? Anyone having doubt in the problem statement, guys? No? Great. So, how we can actually solve this? See. If, let's suppose I tell you that I give you the freedom that decide that which element you are going to take over here. What is this value? This value is actually the maximum value. This value is actually the maximum value that among all the red elements that is colored, right? So, let's suppose I tell you that uh, this is this was an array two three five one two four and let's suppose I tell you that the maximum element that I am going to choose is five or let's suppose this is one of the elements that is surely I am going to keep if I tell you like this that this is, is one of the element that I am going to keep for sure and this is the value that I am going to add in the value of maximum element now if I fix this element that is my maximum element what is left with this value, isn't it? This value is the only value that is left that will increase my score. Do you all agree that if I fix my this element, then this element is the only element that is left that will increase my score. What is this element? This element is actually maximum value of the values that are colored red. And this is nothing but number of red colors. Isn't it? So do you all agree that if I, if I fix my this element, then this is the only element that is going to increase my score. Do you all agree? Anyone having doubt in this? That if this number is fixed, then this is the only thing that is going to increase my score. Anyone having doubt in this? Yeah, you are having doubt, Abhishek, or is it clear? You are not having doubt, right? Okay. So, 
let's suppose I fix this element as 5. Okay, let's suppose I fix this element as 5. Now, I want to maximize this number. How would I do that? Tell me, how would I do that? I will choose all the possible elements, right? So, what I will do is, I will choose this element. I will color it red. I will choose this element. I will color it red. And let's suppose I had elements like this as well. Uh, 1, 2, 2, 1. Let's suppose there were more 4 elements. So, what I would have done? I would have chosen this element. Colored it red. I would have chosen this element. Colored it red. This is the maximum number of elements that I can choose. Do you all agree? This is the maximum number of elements that I can choose if I am fixing this element as my this element that is the maximum element of all the red colored balls. So what I'm going to do since I want to maximize my score. So I will try to paint as many numbers as possible by red color. So I will just skip only one element and keep on painting. Keep on painting right with red. I will skip only one element. Paint, uh, keep up. Keep on painting. Keep one element. Keep painted red. Skip one element. Paint it red. Something like this that I am going to do. Do you all agree? Anyone having doubt in this? See, so what actually happens over here is if you if you write bit of numbers like uh, let's suppose array is four, five, two, three, one, two, five, six, seven, two. Let's suppose this is my array. So if you observe what actually will happen is that either you choose this set of elements. Okay. Or, or you choose this set of elements. Either you will choose this set of elements and paint them red, or you will choose this set of elements and paint them red. Because if you fix any element as a maximum element, let's suppose I fix six as my maximum element. So I will try to paint maximum number of balls as red, right? So I will paint this one, this one, and this one, and over here, this one. Similarly, if I, let's suppose, fix seven. So I will try to paint, paint maximum number of the, uh, balls as red. So I will paint five, one, two, four. So if you observe that either you paint this set of balls as red, or you paint this set of balls as red. So these are the only two possibilities that you have. So just take the maximum of answer from both the possibilities and that will be your answer. Do you all get the logic? Yes, great. So let's jump onto the code. So this is actually what my, what I wrote is like, uh, First of all, I took the input of number of elements. Then all the elements are taken as input. Then uh, sum one as the uh, okay. so sum one as zero, m one as zero, m two as zero, and sum two as zero. Now what sum one, sum two, m one, m two is like uh, someone is telling me the number of balls that I am taking when I am starting from here. Right? See, there are two possibilities. Either I start from here. Is the screen not visible? Yeah, it's visible. Great. So either I will start from here or I will start from here. These are the only two possibilities that I have. And once I start from the element, I will just keep on skipping one element and take take the other. Skip one element, take the other, right? So sum one is the number of elements when I start from i equals to zero. Sum two is the number of elements when I start from i equals to one. M1 is the maximum element when I start from i equals to zero. And M2 is the maximum element when I start from i equals to one. So there are only two possibilities, right? So this is the first possibility when I started from i equals to zero. So I just iterated with i equals to zero, i lesser than n, and I will skip one element and take the other. So I am incrementing my i with two. So my sum one increases, that is the number of balls, and m1 becomes maximum of m1 comma, the current number that I am in. Okay, so m1 basically stores the maximum of all the numbers that I am taking in the first possibility. Similarly, sum two becomes equals to zero, I just iterated in the same fashion, only my starting index changes, that is i becomes equal to 1, the starting index. And I'm incrementing my i with 2. Sum 2 increases, that is number of balls taken in this possibility, some number of balls colored red in this possibility, and m2 becomes maximum of m2, comma the current number that I am. So what will be your answer? In first possibility, my score is sum 1 plus m1. In the second possibility, my score is sum 2 plus m2. So my answer will be maximum of since you wanted to wanted the maximum score, so my answer will be sum one plus m one, comma sum two plus m two ka maximum. 
Do you all get the logic and the code? Yes. Maximum value plus n by 2. Kar sakte. I think we can do that. Just try that once. Like this was the thing that I actually thought during the contest. Actually, I read the question wrong initially. Instead of maximum, I read this sum. And uh, I just messed it up. Okay. This was actually, this is actually what the book is. Yes. Because I think that n by 2 may give wrong answer because of the seal and floor value. Yeah. So you can check that. Fresh, okay. this code is clear to everyone. Anyone having doubt in this? No? Great. So let's move on to the second question. So you are given n points on the x-axis. The name of the problem is all pairs segments. Okay. So you are given n points on the x-axis at increasing positive integer coordinates. That is x1 is lesser than x2 is lesser than dot dot up till xn. For each pair i comma j, so that i is lesser than j, you draw the segment xi xj. The segments are closed. That is the segment a to b contains the points a, a plus 1 up till b. Okay. Now you are given q quid. In the ith query, you are given a positive integer ki and you have to determine how many points with integer coordinates are contained in exactly ki segments. So just notice exactly ki segments. Okay. That is actually what the question is. So let's understand with the question with the help of let's suppose this particular example. Okay. So what you are given is you are given the value n that is the number of elements in the array and the value q that is the number of queries. So over here n is equal to 6, q is equal to 50. Now you are given n numbers. So n numbers over here are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. Now what you are doing is what you are doing is for every i lesser than j, you are constructing a line segment from a of i to a of j. That is what you are doing is, from 1 you are constructing a line segment till 2, from 1 you are constructing a line segment till 3, from 1 you are constructing a line segment till 5, then from 1 you are constructing a line segment till 6, then from 1 you are constructing a line segment till Okay. Similarly, from 2, you are constructing a line segment till 3. From 2, you are constructing the line segment till 5. From 2, you are constructing the line segment till 6. From 2, you are constructing the line segment till 7. Okay. Then from 3, you are constructing a line segment till 5. Then till 6. Then till 7. Okay. Then from 5, you are constructing a line segment till 6. Then 7. And then from 6, you are constructing a line segment. Now, they have asked you some queries. Right? The query is that, let's suppose I take this particular query of 5. Okay. So, if the query value is 5, this means they want me to tell that how many points in this entire coordinate system are there for which they lie in exactly five segments. Exactly five means exactly five. Just see, if you check point one, point one is lying in how many line segments? Can anyone tell me? Point one is lying in how many line segments? Okay, fine. So let's let's understand this only. Like point one is lying in how, how many line segments? It is lying in five line segments. Similarly, point two is lying in how many line segments? Can anyone tell me point two is lying in how many line segments? Nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do you all get this nine? Yes. 
Similarly, point three is lying in how many line segments? Point three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven, right? Great. Similarly, point four is lying in how many line segments? Though point four is not over here, but point four will also lie in the line segments, right? So point four is lying in how many line segments? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Agree. Similarly, point five is lying in how many line segments? Point five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven, right? If I'm not wrong, point five is lying in eleven line segments. Similarly, point six. No. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. nine right? Similarly, point seven is lying in how many line segments? One, two, three, four, five, right? Five. Yes. Similarly, can anyone tell me point eight is lying in how many line segments? Point eight, nine, ten, and all numbers greater than eight. They are lying in exactly zero line segments, right? Similarly, can anyone tell me point zero, minus one, minus two, minus three are lying in how many line segments? They are lying in Zero line segments, right? So this thing should be clear. Now they have made a query. What queries are this? So let's suppose query number is this. The query value is five. Query value five means you need to tell how many points lie in exactly five line segments. Now tell me how many points lie in exactly five line segments. How many points lies in exactly five line segments? Two, right? One lies in exactly five line segments and seven lies in exactly five line segments. So I can say that, okay, there are two line segments that lie in exactly five. Similarly, if someone asks me how many uh, lines, uh, how many points lies in exactly two line segments. So how many points lies in exactly two line segments? Zero, right? So the answer to this query will be two, uh, zero. Similarly, someone's, uh, someone asks me how many points, uh, how many points lies in exactly 11 line segments. So what will be my answer? Two, right? There are two line segment. There are two points that lies in exactly eleven line segments. Similarly, there are exactly three points that lies in. There are three points that lies in exactly nine line segments, right? So you can see the answer of this query as well. The answer of this query is zero zero zero. At five, you had answer as two. At five, you had answer as two. At nine, you had answer at th as three. And at 11, you had answer as 2. And rest, all answers were 0. So is the question understood? What is actually the question is? If question asks you Ki, then you need to tell that how many points lies in exactly Ki line, Ki line segments. Okay, how many points lies in exactly Ki line segments. This is something that you need to tell. Is the question clear? Is the question clear? Yes. So how we can actually do this? The main intuition was that, okay, if I am calculating this, if I somehow calculate this entire thing, then can I say that job becomes easy for me? If I can maintain a map and I can tell that, okay, how many points are there that are, lie, that are lying in exactly X line segments? That is MP of x is equals to y means that there are exactly y points that are lying in x line segments. If I if I simply construct a map like this, so can you tell me that if I give a query ki, then the answer will be mp of k basically. What I told is that what what my intuition was that if I somehow if I somehow construct like this a map e comma value where the key would be that how many line segments? Key would be basically number of line segments. Number of line segments. And value will be number of points with which lie exactly in key number of line segments. Okay. Is this thing clear what actually I am storing in my map? 
then if I let's suppose make a query of k, if I yeah. So if I now simply make a query of k, so my answer will be mp of k. Do you all agree? We will see how we will store this map, but is the logic or uh, is this thing clear that what actually we are storing in our map? Yes, great. How we can actually do this? See, let me have that initial array only. Uh, one, two, three, five, six, seven. So this is actually a very base, uh, famous question, famous thing. Okay, let me tell you how. If I say you that, tell me in how many line segments three is line. Okay, I make a simple question to you that tell me in how many line segments three lines. I made a simple question like this. Okay, tell me how we can do this. See, if I am telling that there is a line segment in which three is line. So basically the question becomes the same that tell me the number of sub arrays. So this is actually a famous question. Okay. Number of sub arrays that contains three. But in this question, there was a slight modification. Number of sub arrays that contains three, but length of sub array. is greater than one. Or if I simply tell that number of sub arrays of length greater than one that contains C. Why I'm telling greater than one? Because you don't have a line segment like this, right? That is starting at the same point, ending at the same point. You don't have line segment like this. You either have line segment like this. You either have line segment like this. You have line segments like this, but you don't have a line segment that is starting at the same point and ending at the same point, right? So basically the question becomes that tell me the number of sub arrays that contain three and that have a size greater than one. That is number of sub arrays of size greater than one that contains three. Do you all able to relate with that? That this is actually what the question is. Is anyone having doubt in this? Anyone having doubt in this, that the question is basically the number of sub arrays of size greater than one that contains three. Okay, great. So how to do that? This is actually a very famous question. Okay. So I am telling if, if we are at three, so I want this element as three. Okay, this element is something that I want. Now tell me the possibilities that where my sub array can start. My sub array can start either over here. My sub array can start either over here. My sub array can start either over here. Do you all agree? Do you all agree that my sub array can either start at this point, at this point or this point? So number of starts I have is equal to three. Similarly, I can say that my sub array can either end over, my sub array can either end over here, my sub array can either end over here, or my sub array can either end over here. So can I say that the number of ends that I have is equal to four? Do you all agree? So total number of sub arrays, can't I say the total number of sub arrays is nothing but three into four? Total possibilities of start multiplied by total possibilities of end. And we have to subtract one from here. Why? Because this possibility starting at this point, ending at this point. So I need to simply subtract one from it. And this is actually, yeah, start and end can't be same. So we subtracted one. So this is actually the number of line segments that will contain three. Or the number of line segments of which three will be part with. Part with. Okay. Is this thing clear to everyone? The question is not yet completed. But is this thing clear to everyone? Yes. Anyone having doubt in this? Explain again. Okay. I want the number of sub arrays of size greater than one that contains three. Now tell me if any sub array is containing three, then what are the start points that I have of the sub array? From where my sub array can start? My sub array can start either from here, either from here, or either from here, right? Do you do you agree with this? That my sub array can either start from here from here or here. So three possibilities of start. Similarly, my sub array can either end over here, 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 or here. So there are four possibilities of end, right? So the total number of sub arrays that I can construct that is having this element three is nothing but three into four. Because for why start with three? 
why can't you start with three if you are having this line segment so this is a valid line segment right this will contain the point three three will be part of this line segment why can't you start with three if you start with three you can have a subarray that contains three right you can either start with this point this point or this point and for every start you can either end over here end over here end over here or end over here right so total number of subarrays that actually or the total number of line segments of which this particular three will be part of is three into four. But from that, I have to subtract one. That is this particular case. That is, I start at this point and end at this point. This case needs to be subtracted because this is not a valid line segment. So this is how I can actually find that, okay, point three will be part of how many line segments. Is this thing clear? Clear, right. So the C. For all the points that I have, that is 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, I can calculate like this. But what for the points that I don't have? That is between 3 and 5, I also have a value 4 as well. I don't care of the points that are greater than 7, that is 8, 9, 10. I know that for them, the value will be 0. Similarly, for 0, minus 1, minus 2, I don't care. But what for the points that are in between? See, if I am talking of point 0.4 over here, just observe, nothing changes, nothing changes. If I am talking of four, if I am talking of element four, so tell me, just tell me one thing before explaining this, tell me one thing. If I tell you that I have a point four, these were the coordinate system that was given to me. These were the coordinate system that were given to me. Do you all agree that five, six, that is all the points between four and seven, they will be the part of same number of line segments. Do you agree with me in this? Tell me. All the points between 4 and 7 will be part of the same number of line segments. Anyone having doubt in this? No, right? And how many points do I have in between? Do you all agree that the number of points that I have in between is nothing but 7 minus 4 minus 1? Do you all agree with me in that? Do you agree in both of these points that the, all the points that are between 7 and 4 will be part of the same number of line segments and the number of points that I have in between is nothing but 7 minus 4 minus 1. Okay. Now the only thing left is that how many line segments the, each of these points are part of. So tell me, if I am telling that the points in between, if I need to find that points in between are part of some line segments, I can't, I want to find that how many line segments are these. Do you all agree? That for these points in between to be part of some line segment, the line segment can either start from this point, this point, or this point. Do you all agree with me in this? Do you all agree with me in this? Similarly, for these points to be part of some line segment, line segments can either end at this point, this point, this point. So can I say that the number of line segments that these points are part of is nothing but 3 into 3, that is 9. Do you all agree with me in this? Is this thing clear to everyone? How to find number of line segments these middle points are part of? Anyone having doubt in this? Yeah. See, if, if I'm telling that there are some points in between, so how many line segments they are part of? So see, if there is a line segment that starts over here and ends over here only, so these points will not be part of those line segments, right? So I can either start from this point, this point, or this point, but I have to end either at this point, this point, or this point. So for every start, there are three possibilities. So number of starts that I have is three. So the total possibilities become three into three that are equals to nine. So I will have nine line segments for which four will be part of. Because I am drawing line segments only between this, right? So this is actually the entire logic behind this. So let me jump onto the code. You all will get it better. See. So first of all, what I did is I took the number of uh, numbers in the array that is coordinates and Q as input, and then I took all the coordinates as input. Okay. 
Then I constructed a map. The map is doing the same thing as already explained. Now I went over all the indexes. Okay. Now the ith index will be part of how many line segments? Do you all agree that ith index will be part of? If you just observe, if I if I am considering zero based indexing, so this point will be part of how many line segments? If if this is index two, if this is i equals to two, so number of starts that I have is nothing but i plus one. Number of starts that I have is i plus one since it, since I am considering zero based indexing. And the number of ends that I have is n minus i. If you just observe, n is nothing but 6 over here. 6 minus 2 is 4. So number of ends that I have is n minus i. So the total number of line segments for which this current point will be part of is i plus 1 multiplied by n minus i and minus 1 for the line segment for the subarray that is starting at the same point and ending at the same point. Okay. So this is already, this is something that I already explained. So MP of temp, I simply increased by one. That okay. If this value is temp, so I have a point that is part of exactly temp number of line segments. So I simply increase the MP of temp with one. Then if I is greater than zero, I am calculating for middle points. Okay. How I am calculating for middle points? If I am at a current index I, if I am, I am, if I have these, if I at a, if I am at a current index i, then I am calculating the answer for the middle point between i and i minus one. Okay, I am calculating answer for the middle points that lies between values i and i minus one. For these, I am calculating. So first of all, how many points are they? They are v of i minus v of i minus one minus one. Okay. How many line segments they are part of? They are part of i multiplied by n minus i line segments. Do you all agree? That is, if let's suppose, if I just take this example, so you were having one, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. So this is index zero, this is index one, this is index two, this is index three, this is index four, this is index five. So this four is part of how many line segments? The starting points are three. There are three possibilities of starting point, which is basically the value of index i. So i multiplied by the ending possibilities are also three over here, which is nothing but n minus i, if you look n minus n because n is equals to 6. So 6 minus 3 is 3. So i into n minus i is a total number of line segments that these medial points will be part of. So first of all, I calculated that and then I increased the frequency of those with the number of points that I have in between. So the number of points that I have in between is nothing but v of i minus v of i minus 1 minus 1. So this is how I constructed my map. Then what I am doing is I am simply iterating over all the Q, taking the input of K, that is the number of uh, line segments for which I want the answer. Then if in my map that K is not present, this means my answer will be zero, as my answer will be NP of K. Then I am simply printing a new value. This is basically the code for this question. Yes, go ahead and wait, I am allowing you to unmute. Yeah, that. Uh, sir, जब ये contest में ये वाला portion कर रहा था, एक formula derive कर रहा था मैंने like observation के through. What? Uh, like number of before elements plus number of after elements plus उनका product मैंने chat में भी भेजा है. So did it work? मतलब जो आपका logic है same वही लगाया था पर गलत आ रहा था कुछ cases के लिए. So once you can verify that, but like when do I not? मतलब दो घंटे तक उसमें ही लगा रहा और proof वगैरह सब करा सब सही रहा पर बाद में पता नहीं क्यों दिक्कत कर रहा था ये. So it may be you yeah, have you seen this case of minus one that is starting and ending at the same point? नहीं वो सब मैंने कर लिया था वो formula जो मैंने लगाया था वो सही काम कर रहा था मैंने तीनों test case के लिए देख लिया था वो खुद से मतलब dry run करके. Then you have to check a bit with mentors. आप एक बार लास्ट में बता दोगे? Okay, I will see. Okay, thank you. Is uh, do anyone have doubt in this? Uh, because uh, it's actually given that the input is shorted. It's already given that the input is short. You are given the coordinates in shorted order. That is why this is working. Otherwise, if it was not, then we would have shorted this. Anyone else having doubt in this code? It's it's actually a very famous thing. Right? You want to find a number of subarrays of which this is part of. Uh, similarly, you would have questions like these, like tell me if you are having an array like this, 
let's suppose this is your array one two three five six you want to find the number of subarrays that contain this segment so what you will do you can either start at this point this point or this point and you can either end at this point or this point so you just simply multiply it, start multiplied by end and you will get the number of subarrays of which this three five is part of so this is actually a very common and based on this, this question was there. Is it clear? Should I move on to the next question? Yes. So this is the next question. The name of the question is cards partition. So you have some cards. An integer between 1 and n is written on each card, specifically for each i from 1 to n you have AI cards which have the number I written on them. Okay. So there is also a shop which contains unlimited cards of each type and you have K coins. So you can buy at most K new cards in total and the cards you buy can contain any integer between one and N inclusive. After buying the new cards, you must partition all your cards into decks according to the following rules. All the deck must have the same size and there is no pair of cards with the same value in the same deck. So you need to find the maximum possible size of the deck after buying cards and partitioning them optimally. So let's understand what actually the question is. So in the question, they have given you some, some value n. So you have basically cards from 1 to n. Okay. Then they have given you a vector a. So this basically tells you, the AI basically tells you that how many cards of type I you have. Okay. So if let's suppose the value of AI is 322, two, this means that there are three cards of type 1, there are two cards of type 2, and there are two cards of type 3. So you have cards from 1 to n, and they have given you the frequency of every card that you have. The other thing that they have given you is the sum value k. So there is a shop. There is a shop. And in the shop, all the, the cards of all the frequencies are present. Unlimited cards of all the all types are present. Unlimited cards of all types are present. But every card costs you one, one rupees. And you have k rupees in total. So you can just see that you can maximum buy k cards, right, from the shop. Since every card costs you one, so you can buy a maximum k card. Now, once you're done with all the things, what you're doing is, you are partitioning these cards. So if I just write this thing, there are three cards of type one, there are two cards of type two, and there are three cards of type, uh, there are two cards of type three. Okay. Now what you're doing is you're partitioning. Let's suppose I take one more card of type two. I have, let's suppose the value of K is equal to one, and I take one more cards of type two. Now what I need to do is, I need to partition them such that I will form a deck I will form some decks. Okay. So every deck should be of same size. This is the one condition that I have. The second condition is that no two cards of same type should be present in the deck. So decks should contain cards of different types. Like, let's suppose I want to form a deck over here. So what I will do is, since there are three ones, so I know this three ones, uh, no two ones can part of can be part of the same deck. So I just give them different decks. Similarly, for two, I give them, let's suppose this two and two. Then for three, I give like this. And then for two and three, I form like this. So you can see that every deck is having distinct card types. And size of every deck is two. So both the conditions are matched. So you can say that, okay, the maximum uh, size of uh, maximum deck size that you can obtain is two. You can't obtain a deck size of three over there. Let's try if we can obtain a deck size of three. You are having one, 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 two, two, three, three. Let's see if we can obtain the maximum deck size of three. So you are having one, 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 two, two, three, three. Yeah, deck means you are storing some cards. You can just imagine like a container. Okay. So I know that I want to store and the value of K is one. That is, I can buy 
one card of any type. I will see that which type I need to buy, but let's see if we can form a deck of three sides. This one should be part of different decks, right? This is what I did. This two should be part of different decks. This two two. So let's let's suppose I give them like this. This three should be part of different decks. So let's suppose I give this three over here and I give this three over here. Okay. Now for this particular container, I have already exhausted all my cards. For this particular deck, I have only one card over here. And the requirement was that every deck should contain the same number of cards. This deck is containing three cards. This deck is containing three cards. But this deck is containing only one card. So I need to buy two cards. Now for buying two cards, I should, I should have that much amount of money as well, right? But the money that I have is only one. That is, I can buy only one card. Let's suppose I buy card of type two. Then my K becomes zero. Because I have already exhausted all my amount. That is, I was having one rupee from the start. I buyed, I bought a card of type two. And now I don't have any amount left. So this deck now contains two cards. This means that I can't keep a deck that contains three cards. So the maximum size that is possible of a deck is so two will be the answer to this question. Is the question clear? Anyone having doubt in the question? No. So actually the main intuition, yeah, even I tried BS as well in the start, but like I messed it up totally, but it was not happening with BS. And because the logic again explained, you want me to explain the question, Ajit? The question is that you are given some cards, okay, of some type. So like for card, type, card of type 1, you have 3. For card of type 2, you have 2 cards. For card of type 3, you have 2 cards. You want to form a deck of cards so that every deck contains equal number of cards, okay? And deck one deck should not contain cards of same type. That is actually what the question is. So you can observe over here. And there is also a value K that tells you that, okay, you have K amount and you can buy K number of cards of whatever type you want. But you need to tell me, you need to tell me that what is the maximum size of the deck possible. So what I did was, this was something that is given to me. That is, cards of type 1 was 3, cards of type 2 was 2, cards of type 3 was 2. I With this amount K equals to 1, I bought an additional card of type 2. And then you can see I arranged the cards in the deck like this. So that every deck contained equal number of cards. That is every deck is, deck is containing two cards. And in every deck, cards are of different types. So I can say that the maximum number of cards a deck can contain is two. Two will be the answer. When I tried to construct a deck containing three cards, I failed. So two will be my answer to this question. This is actually what the question is. So let's see how we can actually solve this. So if I tell you that you have cards from number one to one, what was the basic intuition to this question was that if you get this intuition, the job will be clear. The intuition was that, tell me, what can be your maximum answer? Tell me. If you get this thing, then, then the question is very clear. Do you all agree with me this? Not number of cards, Lakshan. Number of unique cards can be my answer. Yes, and number of card types. Do you all agree with me in this? Anyone having doubt in this that the answer can, what can be the maximum answer? Can right? Number of container. No, not number of container. Number of different card types. I have cards of type 1, type 2, type 3, type N. Now I know that my deck should contain all cards of different types only. So the best case possibility is 
that I have a deck and in deck I have the cards of all the types. That is one, two, three, four, up till n. So in this case, the size of the deck will be equal to n. I can't have a deck of size greater than n. Anyone having doubt in this that the maximum possible answer is n? No? Great. Now, how to check that if I am telling that, okay, the deck size is x, x, okay. So can I obtain a deck size x or not? How can I see this? See, if I tell you that this was an array, okay, if I tell you this was an array and uh, this was the array given to you and the value of k was, let's suppose, 1. So can anyone see me? What is the total number of cards that I can form? What is the total number of cards? Do you all agree that the total maximum number of cards that I can obtain is nothing but 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1? Do you all agree with me in this? Anyone having doubt in this that the total number of cards that I can obtain is 8? Okay. Now if I tell you, if I tell you that, let's suppose I am keeping a deck that is having three cards each. Let's suppose the value of x is three. So can anyone tell me the number of decks that I will have? It will be eight by three, right? This means that I will not distribute two cards. Do you all agree? This means that I will not distribute two cards. That is the only thing that is there. Right. Now tell me one thing. What is the minimum number of cards that you need to distribute? Let me move on to the next page. Tell me. The minimum number of cards that you will need to distribute. Six, no. What were the cards you were having initially? You were having three cards of type one, two cards of type two, two cards of type 3 and you are having the amount k equals to 1. This led you to tell that, okay, the total number of cards that you have is 8. But this 8 was when you used this k. But if you are not using this k, so can you tell me that the minimum number of cards that you need to arrange or partition? This is actually what the minimum number of cards you need to partition, right? That is 7. You are not getting the question actually. The question is that what is the minimum number of cards that you need to put into partition or decks? It is actually seven, right? Answer is seven. K is actually the amount that you have. I think you haven't followed the question yet. K is actually the extra amount that you have with which you can bring some more cards of any type you want. But this was earlier which was given to you. These were the cards you were given. Cards of type 1 was 3. Cards of type 2 was 2. Cards of type 3 was 2. So you had 7 cards initially. With this value of k equals to 1, you can tell that, okay, the total number of cards that you can have is 8. Okay? But the minimum cards that you will have is 7. So if I just write this, the minimum cards that you have is 7. The maximum number of cards that you have is equal to 8. Do you all agree with me in this? Anyone having doubt in this? Anyone having doubt in this? Yes. Okay. If I tell you that I am forming a deck that is having three cards each. So can anyone tell me if I am having the maximum number of cards as eight, then how many decks I will you, I will be able to form? Every deck is containing three cards. So the number of decks that I will be able to form is 8 by 3, that is equal to 2. Now tell me, is this possible? If I am forming two decks each, that is containing three cards, 
the total number of cards that I have used is 2 into 3 that is equal to 6. But the minimum number of cards that I need to use is 7, right? So do you all agree that I can't form a deck of size 3? Do all of you agree with me in this point? Okay. So this is one point. This is one restriction where we are getting. The second restriction, let me tell you. If I let's suppose tell you that, uh, if I let's suppose tell you that you are forming the number of decks. In some example, you are having the number of decks form as uh, three. Okay. And the maximum value in the initial array was, let's suppose, 4. Then again, is this possible to do? I repeat the question. The question is, the question is that I told that the number of decks is 3. And let's suppose the frequency or the types of card 1 is only 4. Then is it possible to have that? You are, I am telling the number of decks is only 3. Now cards of type 1 is 4. So I will give card of type 1, 1 to this deck, 1 to this deck, 1 to this deck. Still I have one card of type 1 left. But I can't give it to any deck. Because the number of decks were 3. So in this case also answer is not possible. Do you all agree? If both of these decks, if both of these conditions are false, that is, if both of these conditions are satisfied, that okay. I can, I, the number of decks that I am forming is greater than equal to whatever the maximum element in the array is. And the total number of cards that I am using is greater than the minimum number of cards. If both these conditions are valid, this means that I can always form a deck of size X. I can always do that. Just imagine why. Just imagine why. Because if I tell you that the cards of type 1 was 3, Cards of type 2 was 2 and cards of type 3 was also 2. And I tell you that I, and the value of k was 1. And I tell you that I want to form a deck of size 2. I want to form a deck of size 2. So what is the total number of cards that you have, maximum number of cards that you can have? Maximum number of cards that you can have is 8. If you are forming a deck of size 2, do you all agree that the number of decks that I will have is nothing but 8 by 2, that is equal to 4. Now I can always do this. There are four decks and the maximum element is three and the number of decks is four. So I can always place one in three different decks. For two, I can choose any deck. For three, I can choose this deck and this deck. So what I did was I, with this cost K equals to one, I bought an extra two, extra card of type two. I can bring an extra card of type 1 as well. That does not matter. But this is what actually I did. No, number of decks will not be equal to maximum of all AI. You are getting that wrong. See, in this maximum of all AI was 3. But number of decks was 4. So don't get confused with that. Number of decks will not be equal to maximum of all AI. So this is how actually you can solve this question. So if I just go on to move on to the code. Yes. So we know. So what I did was first of all, I found the total sum of cards that I have. So this is the minimum value. Why did we divide 8 by 2? Because 8 is the total number of cards that I have and 2 is the deck size that I have de uh, decided. So how many decks will you have? 8 by 2, no? If every deck is containing 2 cards and the total number of cards you have is 8, then the number of decks you will have is 8 by 2. Yes? So first of all, I calculated the value sum. That is the minimum number of cards that I have. Then I calculated the maximum value in my array A that is stored in maxi. And then I told that, okay, the value C that is the total number of cards that I can generate is sum plus K. Yes. And the maximum deck size that I can have is N. So what I'm doing is I am just iterating till my M is greater than one. 
I am just checking that can I form a deck of size M or not. So this temp one basically stores the number of decks that I will have. So C is the total number of cards. M is the deck size that I have decided. So how many decks will I will I have? C by M, right? If eight is the total number of cards and two is the size of deck that I have decided. So the number of decks that I will have is eight by two, right? That is C by M. Now, if the size of deck multiplied by total number of decks is greater than or equal to the minimum number of cards, that is sum. And the number of decks is greater than or equal to the maximum value in the array. If both of these conditions are met, then I can say that my answer is M. This is the maximum possible deck size that I can have. And I will simply return. And if, I, if this is not true, I am simply doing M minus minus. If I come out of this while loop, this means that my M is one. Now with M equals to one, the answer is always possible. I can always construct a deck of size one. So I'm printing one and simply doing an index. Yeah, the link of this submission will be provided in uh, YouTube description. I can provide over here as well. So this is actually what the solution of this problem is. Do you all get this? M into temp one, I don't require it to be greater than equals to C. C is actually the total number of cards that I have. That is total number of cards includes the original number of cards plus K. So spending K amount is up to me. Then I can either spend it or I can keep it. So it's not necessary to satisfy this condition. But sum is the original number of cards that I had. I had to include them in the partition. So M into temp one should be greater than equals to sum. The code will be provided in uh, the YouTube description. When this video will be uploaded within 30 minutes, then the code will be provided in description. Is this thing clear to everyone? Yes. So yeah, that's all for today. Thanks for joining.